Sherlane McRae. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Gracie Mansion. I am so happy to see all of you here. Happy Asian Pacific Her American Heritage Month. Now, I gotta tell you a secret. Shh. Last night, I tried to learn how to say good evening in like 12 different languages. I did, I did, I, and I didn't get very far. So I'm not even gonna try, I don't wanna embarrass myself. You know, nearly all the languages of the Asia Pacific region are spoken right here in New York City. Right here. And I can't possibly acknowledge all of them or all of the different faiths and cuisines and cultural traditions, but the languages are so beautiful and you are all New Yorkers. I want you all to just raise your voices and say good evening in whatever language you want, just so we can all hear it, all right? I'm gonna say Oh, that was beautiful. One more time. That was so good. One more time. This is why I love New York City. And I'm so happy you're here. This month, we celebrate you and all that you do to make our city so amazing. May is a special month for another reason, too. It's Mental Health Awareness Month. Did you know that? It is, May. It is so important for all of us to protect our mental health and learn how to improve it. Am I right? Yes, of course. But the stigma surrounding this part of being human, the stigma about this part of being human human is so powerful. People are afraid and often ashamed to talk about their emotional struggles. But isn't it human to struggle? Yeah, yeah of course it is. All of us struggle at some time or another, or we have loved ones who are struggling, and, even, and people don't know sometimes where to go for help, don't have someone to turn to and talk to. Now, We've been meeting with leaders in the Asian American and Pacific Islander community about how we can better support the well-being of your families and communities. And shh, some of those leaders are here tonight, and I want to thank them for all they do to help. If we all, yes, let's applaud them. Thank you. They deserve that. They work very, very hard. If we work together, we can help end the stigma that causes so many people to suffer in silence and isolation. If we work together, we can connect people who need services to care. And if we work together, we can help people stay healthier. But we need everyone to do their part. Everyone has a role to play in keeping our families and our communities well. Now, anyone here can take mental health first aid training for free. This is a course where people learn the signs of mental illness and substance use disorders and how to help family members and neighbors. These are diseases just like asthma or diabetes and all of us need to learn more so we can make sure we help, are helping our loved ones and ourselves. Our Thrive NYC team is here tonight ready to help you sign up for this free training. Did you hear me say free? Free. free. And you know education is very important, right? So sign up with our Thrive NYC team and remember that every New Yorker can call our free confidential mental health helpline anytime they want at 1-888-NYC-WELL. That's 1-888-NYC-WELL. Can you say it with me, please? one a A A N Y C well. That's very good. I'm gonna give you an A plus for that. Now, 
If you call that number, there's a trained counselor ready to talk with you, you know, give you information, whatever it is you need to help you take the next step to helping you um, be well or our, our loved one be well. So please, can you please help us spread the word about this phone number? What is it again? Okay. Very good. Please tell everyone about this number. We have people who speak Mandarin and with translation and 200 other languages. So, you know, no one should be uh, afraid that they can't get someone who understands them. So I'm going to introduce someone now who you may have heard of. He's a very tall man. Very tall. I've known, we've actually been married for 25 years. Can you believe that? 25 years. And I think he's a pretty great mayor. He understands that diversity is our city's greatest strength. So please help me welcome our mayor, Bill de Blasio. I want everyone to know that it's 25 years on May 14th. And I want all the couples out there, but particularly the males in couples, to remember your anniversary. <laughs> it's May 14th, honey. Yes. <laughs> Have I set a good example? You set a very good example. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the People's House. We are so happy to have you here. And I want to start by thanking Sherlane. You heard the passion with which she speaks on making sure that everybody in every community gets the help they need, every family. And she has changed the way people think and the way people talk in this town. And she's helped so many people to get what they need and get the respect they need. Let's thank her for all she has done. Now, this night is about people who have brought so much to our city. Everyone here tonight, we celebrate you. We thank you for making New York City stronger. We thank you for making us the greatest city in the world by all you do. Now, I want to see tonight if we have everybody from this community present. So I'm going to call out. Do we have people here from Southern Asia? Do we have people here from Southeast Asia? Do we have people here from the Pacific Islands? Do we have people here whose Asian heritage came by way of the Caribbean? OK, a few. Maybe there's some people here from East Asia. All right, I think everybody's here. We are so proud and so appreciative of everyone's contributions. Now, I got a lot of friends here tonight who have come to join the celebration. I want to shout them out and thank them. First of all, one of the great Leaders in keeping this city safe, the District Attorney of the Bronx, Darcel Clark, thank you. And by the way, I want to note, there's, there's a lot of dignitaries out there in the audience, too, representing a lot of the countries from which people hail. Let's give a round of applause to all the diplomats and the international dignitaries here tonight. From my administration, I am very proud of the leaders you see behind me. I'm going to give each one their due, and I want you to clap for all of them. Our Commissioner for Youth and Community Development, Bill Chong. <laughs> Director of the Mayor's Office of Operations, Jeff Thumb Kitty Katsum. <laughs> Our brand new Commissioner from excuse me, brand new commissioner for media and entertainment that used to be known as the Office of Film and Television. And she is newly minted commissioner and a special shout out to all the Filipinos in the crowd because you are represented by a great Filipina and Del Castillo. 
While I'm on the Philippines theme, our Commissioner for Human Rights, Carmelin Malales. <laughs> Chief Service Officer, also not quite as new, but a little bit new to our administration, our Chief Service Officer, making sure people all over this city give of themselves and make New York City great. Welcome, Pat Eng. Someone who takes care of our money, the Chief Actuary, Sherry Chan. Our Chief Analytics Officer, Kelly Jin. The Executive Director of the Children's Cabinet, Will Yang. Our Chair of the City Planning Commission, Marissa Lago. And then, if you like this gathering and all the gatherings like it, I want you to thank three people who make it possible. The Executive Director of our Office of Special Events, Melissa Brown, also newly named to her role. The Executive Director of the Gracie Mansion Conservancy, Paul Gunther. And our Director of Advance, Jerry, Jesse Sendroff. Jesse Sendroff. All right. Now, everybody, when we gather, we are celebrating a combined community that's now well over a million New Yorkers. Well over 15% of the population of this city and growing. Now, I like to brag about New York City. And I like to brag about New York City and sometimes compare it to cities on that other coast. So there are more Asian Americans in New York City than there are come in Los Angeles and San Francisco combined. Over 50 nations represented here, making us strong. Now I want to find out if all the boroughs are represented tonight, so let me do that test too. Who is here from the Bronx? Wow, the Bronx is loud tonight. Bronx. Bronx, okay. Who's here from Staten Island? Good effort, okay. But do note that Staten Island, the Asian population of Staten Island has grown more than any other borough in the last 20 years. Who is here from Manhattan? Who is here from Brooklyn? Okay, let's see if you represent. Who's here from Queens? I had a feeling Queens would be strong. <laughs> so you notice everyone is here and everyone is in harmony tonight. Everyone respects each other. All, all sorts of people, all different backgrounds, all different nations, all different walks of life. But we're New Yorkers, so we gather in harmony. Now don't we wish our nation would gather in harmony right now? Don't we miss that idea of harmony right now? Aren't we saddened when we hear division coming from our nation's capital? We're going through an identity crisis in this country right now. But I, I think there's something that we could offer to help our nation make sense of it. And here's what I want to tell you. This city, this city of all people, we are the safest that we have been in many decades, the safest big city in America. We have the most jobs we have ever had in our history. We are the strongest we've ever been, and we have the most immigrants we've had in a hundred years. So I say a simple thing, and I want people to hear it and understand it everywhere I go. We are doing better and better. It's not in spite of immigrants. It's because our immigrant brothers and sisters joined us and helped us to become even better together. That's what we celebrate tonight. So I want to thank everybody for being part of this wonderful, noble experiment that is New York City, for being a beacon to our nation and our world, for showing people the way it can be done. And now I have a great pleasure of introducing tonight's honoree. She is an actor and she is a writer. Once upon a time she studied the law, but now she calls herself a recovering attorney. 
You have heard her voice on Reading Rainbow. You have seen her on TV in Search Party and Royal Pains. Not only has she been accomplished in the arts, she gives back to the community as the president of the Asian American Film Lab, which promotes diversity in the arts and gives Asian Americans a chance to make such a big imprint on the arts and culture of this nation. And she's also a passionate advocate for animals. She does a lot for her, with all her time, and she does a lot for all of us. It is my pleasure to bring forward Jennifer Beatty Yen. Jennifer is going to speak in a moment, but first, it wouldn't be a special event without a proclamation, would it? Here comes the proclamation. And Jennifer, hold that up. Now, this proclamation, Jennifer, talks about a lot of great things you have done, and I will not read it. Because this crowd wants to go back to the party, but <laughs> I want to tell you the last line because when you're mayor, you get to do this through a proclamation. It's a very special thing. And the last line says, therefore I, Bill de Blasio, mayor of the city of New York, do hereby proclaim Thursday, May 9th, 2019, in the city of New York as Jennifer Beatty Yen Day. Congratulations. You have your own day. All yours. Thank you. All right. <laughs> You're the best. Well, thank you. Thank you so much to the mayor, the first lady, all the incredible city staff, all of you uh, behind this amazing event for this tremendous honor. I am beyond humbled. I am also kind of in awe of the city's courage in giving somebody who is both an actor and a lawyer access to a microphone. <laughs> is <laughs> Right? Is anybody else out here an actor or a lawyer? Come on, I know you are. I know you are. Yeah, then you know, right? We are terrible. We will just talk forever. Oh, see, I see the fear. Don't worry, don't worry. I will not do that to you today. I just want to take this opportunity to very briefly address one topic, just one, that is very near and dear to my heart, and that is representation, specifically Asian American representation. <laughs> in entertainment media, so film and television. So I run the Film Lab. It is a small nonprofit that provides resources and produces content that highlights Asian Americans, women, and others of color. And we specifically focus on Asian Americans because unlike most other racial groups, even as our population in this country has increased, our representation on screen in entertainment media has not followed suit. In fact, in many years, it's actually declined. We remain largely unseen, and movies like Crazy Rich Asians are the, <laughs> are the exception, not the rule. When we are seen, if we are seen at all, it is largely as the other, the fresh off the boat newbie, or any one of a number of tired stereotypes that I think everybody in this room is painfully familiar with. Now, I know there's a lot going on in the world, and whitewashed entertainment may seem like a very trivial issue, but I submit to you that it is actually critically important. Why? Because entertainment media is the method by which we as a country leave our history and tell our story about who we are as a people to the rest of the world. When the mainstream media silences, stereotypes, marginalizes, erases us all together, it creates the widespread perception that we do not belong, that we are not equal, that we are not real Americans. The reality, of course, is that this is our country. Yeah. <laughs> Asian Americans have fought for and died on this soil since the War of 1812. But whether our families got here in 1812 or 2012, it doesn't matter. This is our home, 
we belong here, and we should not and do not need to ask anyone's permission to be seen or heard. <laughs> and, and that's the really exciting thing about running an organization like the Film Lab. It's this ability to reclaim our stories, right? To put us and others of color back in the story in which we belong, in the story that is our story. Now, the Film Lab's very small. We operate on a shoestring budget, staffed primarily by volunteers. But I like to think that we provide more resources and content to our community than organizations with 10 times the budget. And we are able to do that because of our amazing staff. And I know some of them are here today. So could you raise your hand so I can embarrass you? Come on, guys. Eric, I see you. Ray, where are you? I know you. Yay, they're over there. So, these are wonderful people. They are the backbone of the lab. Certainly nothing that I accomplished through it could be done without them. They have a tremendous amount of heart. But even with a tremendous amount of heart, it can sometimes feel as though we're fighting against a Goliath. And that is why recognition like this is so meaningful, so important. I am truly grateful to Mayor de Blasio and the First Lady for this amazing honor and to all of you for ensuring that our faces, our voices, and our stories are seen and heard, not just as whispers in the corner, but as shouts from the center of the stage. So thank you, and keep shouting. <laughs> Give Jennifer a round of applause, everybody. Everybody, again, thank you. Everybody, we have so much to be proud of in this city. Thank you for making it as great as it is. Let us celebrate together in harmony and peace and love and show the world the way it's meant to be done. Thank you. God bless you. Good night, everybody. Thank you.